Dustin Young here, Loam Roamer, and today we're going to talk about fitting the Olin's coil to an SB series Yeti bike. This video will apply to other bikes as well. I'm going to specifically talk about the Yetis because the person who does all the suspension work for me, uh, Mike over at Full Flow Suspension, custom machines some parts that you can't buy from Olin's and they make all the difference in the world to the performance of the shock. Now, this might be something you could add to air, but the benefit would probably be significantly lower and we're gonna get into why. And it has to do with the spherical bearing system that can be installed in the forward eyelet or the eyelet that's gonna go through the forward portion on the front triangle of the frame. So inside of, let me get off camera here so it stays focused. Inside of right here, there's a spherical bearing. And in that bearing, see how close I can get, you can see the bearing will move around. So why is that really important on a coil versus on air? So the shaft on the coil shock is significantly different. Uh, one, it's smaller, two, frame flex is what causes this issue. So it's not the shock itself, but rather frame flex. And different bikes, they build in different levels of frame flex. So one of the reasons, if you run aluminum wheels, you might feel your frame flex a lot more than when you're in carbon wheels, because the carbon wheels sort of compensate for the, and make, a, make the bike track better. But what you get, is you wanna use Olin's, and I'll put the part number in the description, the Olin's uh, spherical bearing kit. What you won't be able to buy are these caps right here. These caps are custom, Mike had them custom machined. They've got the O-ring system nicely installed here. I'm gonna see if I get off camera if I can get this bad boy to focus on this, there we go. You can see if you take these off, there's a nice groove in there. That groove, everything is machined well. This surface, this will be really hard to see in the camera, is actually conical to, so that it butts up against the spherical bearing uh, and sits there nicely. And again, you've got a really nice groove here for the O-ring to sit in um, you know, and get all this stuff managed really well. This end is machined really nicely. It's got a little bit of chamfering um, and so that it comes out really, really clean. Why? So, side load. What you get when you get a coil shock where the, all this is really tight. So you don't have a bunch of O-rings and a bunch of spacing. This coil fits really tight into this metal bushing plate, this shaft does. And so what you get is when the rear flexes and different from the front, which is something they designed into the bike, you get a side load. And while you couldn't side load this by hand enough to matter, body weight, G-forces, you know, if you're in a big berm, something steep and you come in hard, you can side load this enough. And one of the ways you can tell a lot of that's happening is you can see, I have a lot of scraping marks. I'll take some pictures as well along this this is what helps keep it a lot quieter. It's, it keeps it from rattling, the coil from rattling against the shaft body. But if you can see in here in the shaft, that, that is a tight fitting. So by putting the spherical bearing in, look at all that play. It allows the coil to move and adapt to where the rear end is moving. So when the rear end gets out of alignment with the front end, it allows this shaft to continue to travel straight. Now. What you'll see is the shaft is wear part, and over time you may need to just put a shaft in. It's just part of maintenance, but that's just one thing you're gonna overcome by putting this spherical bearing and correct bearing kit in, or bearing end caps in. What you're really gonna do is allow the rear shock to travel correctly. Uh, it's going to reduce friction, reduce stiction, and allow that that shaft to move smoothly in and out of the shock body. And that means you're gonna get a higher performing suspension. 
you didn't decide to go with a coil so that you could have less small bump compliance, higher friction. You wanted to get rid of the, the incredible friction that's built into an air system, right? You've got lots of, lots of O-rings and lots of opportunity for friction in here that you don't have in a coil. That's, you know, on top of just the way they're built, that's one of the things they do better. Now, could you run that spherical bearing system in an air shock and would there really be an advantage? Maybe a tiny bit, but not much because with all of the O-rings that are in here, that side load, this stuff is gonna have enough play. Plus this is like a plastic bushing. Um, you know, you're, you're gonna get enough movement and things can get out of alignment. Plus this shaft is really large because everything, you know, it's actually an internal shaft and an external shaft around it to move all the oil through everything. Um, so what you've got is enough O-rings, enough shaft gap because of things like bushings. Um, you've got enough going on there that with what side load you do get, it's gonna be minimal and this thing's gonna overcome that pretty naturally. Um, and you're, you're gonna have a minimal amount of stiction. The reason I decided to do this video is I've seen a few people post lately about shaft wear on their coil shocks. One was specifically on Aline's, but you're gonna see this on the way a coil shock is done, the way a shaft is built. So if you wanna eliminate side load, you're gonna to wanna to get the spherical bearing, and then you're gonna need these end caps custom made because Olean stops, I think at 22 or 25 millimeters, and a Yeti, uh, I will verify this for you, um, I already know the measurement, but a Yeti is 36 millimeters. That's the width you're gonna need, right? So that has to measure the 36 millimeters when it's put together. So that's your width. So Yeti runs, so if you're, no matter what hardware you're looking for, you're always looking for an eight by 36 hardware system. Now what's really cool about the way this is machined is this internal, this internal piece in here is already eight millimeters. It's already ready to go. The bolt will pass through. You know, you can look at that thing move around. Look how nice that is. You're gonna have eight millimeters passing through there already. What's really nice is most of the time what you get is you get hardware that has a long shaft that passes through here and then end caps that go over it in order to get the outer dimension correct, right? Because otherwise you can't have the outer part sitting against this edge, this edge here, and the inner part passing through. So you end up with a multi-piece system. Multi-piece here, but your end caps are singular. And that those end caps fit, I'm gonna try to show you, so nicely inside of that system it's what gives you that really nice play, okay? So, that'll help you eliminate side load. This is an optional kit from Olin's, but it's really a matter of, they don't produce the end caps that you need for Yeti bikes. They don't produce the end caps you need for a lot of bikes. So what Mike's gonna do, so you reach out to Mike at Full Flow, contact information is in, in the description of the video. Uh, he is gonna have a bunch more of these made uh, for lots of different sizes, because there's lots of different bikes. When you run a coil shaft, or when you run a coil shock, um, you really want to keep that shaft traveling uh, straight and keep it from getting any bind or any rub anywhere. Um, also, with a Yeti bike, follow their instructions. Um, I'm sure it helps. The engineers do a really good job with bikes, so follow what they're telling you here. Um, when you put this thing together, you're gonna put the lower bolt in, you're gonna put the upper bolt in, follow all the torque specs, make sure you're, you know, you're getting your alignment right, make sure you get everything put in, then go through the torque process. It will help keep everything in alignment probably just a little bit better. How much that really matters, I like to follow the instructions. I like to make sure I torque everything to exact torque specs because somebody spent the time figuring this information out, not just for bolt strength, but for performance and binding and anything else that could happen if things are not put together correctly. How much it matters, I don't know. Um, to, to the lateral loads that the SB bikes are definitely known for, but this gets rid of that lateral load because as you can see, 
you could have that back end move a lot and that front end and keep this shock in alignment. So it's a really cool feature. Again, reach out to Mike at Full Flow. He's, I know he's gonna be working on this. If you're gonna buy Oleans uh, for your Yeti, buy the shock from him. He'll get the shock set up. He'll get your right coil spring put on and he'll get all the bushings uh, that need to be in there. You know, the rear bushing comes from Yeti. That gets pushed into the right size. You can order it from Yeti or Mike can just get them probably just have a machine like he does the rest. He has a guy machine these front end caps. Um, so reach out, buy the whole thing from him. He'll get it delivered. It'll be ready to bolt into your bike. You'll be a lot happier when you make this change. I was, it was awesome to have done and know that it was in place and I wasn't gonna have any issues. I hope everybody has an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you out on the trails.